Take a flashback to 1980, right before Yamaha destroyed their motocross bikes with the uh, early liquid cooling, which was just, just an absolute nightmare. But this, right here. This is the peak of production for the air-cooled Yamaha two-stroke competition models. Monoshock. Gold wheels. Panic stripe on the tank. Number one. That classic styling. This right here is a special bike, and I'll, I'll leave most of this to the senior to explain. But this is not your average air cooled YZ125. Just been tuned up by the Wizard. So right now she's race ready. We're ready to be put on display in your private collection or museum. Cone pipe, factory gold wheels of Simmons Force. What's happening guys? Ken Kaplan here at the New England Motorcycle Museum. Now this is one badass 125. This is one of those rare occasions when I walked out of the shop with this and I was like, man, I don't even want to take it in the dirt. It's way too nice. Uh, but, but make no mistake, this is designed to be a national caliber winning 125. In other words, you can take this to an AHMRA vintage race and expect to walk away with the number one plate at any level up to the national level for a lot of reasons why. This is a bike that dominated AMA motocross and supercross with guys like Bob Hanna and Brock Glover uh, back in this era. They absolutely decimated the comp competition in the late 70s. 1980 was the last year of the air cool 125. It was the epitome of uh, a couple decades of two-stroke evolution and the, the last great year of the air cool. The first year and second year water cool bikes were, were nightmares. They had a lot of issues. This thing is an absolute ripper. I'm 220 pounds. That's a uh, steep hill, and it will lead up first, second, third gear all the way up. If you can't nail the whole shot on this or win, win a, a vintage race, hell, with the right rider, like a Chris Canning, this, this thing would hold its own against the new bikes. It's got a lot of power. Um, this is a no-expense-spared factory-level race bike. Of you know, I can relate to how much was invested on this. A previous owner put over $10,000 into this bike, building it. And the hour meter shows 3.5 hours of ride time on it. A no expense spared build. He, he found a mint set of Simmons forks. It's a $2,500 set of forks with a $500 set of custom triple clamps to mount them. Uh, uh, it's a $3,000 front end. It's got been upgraded with the gold rims, top of the line, brand new Hoosier tires. Still have the little nubbies on them. We just put those on. That's the first time they've, they've touched the ground. Uh, it's got a brand new gold chain on it. The sprocket's been replaced. The rear, the rear suspension is uh, highly modified also, as is the front and rebuilt. Uh, this was a frame off, down to the frame. Frame was sandblasted and painted. Engine was completely rebuilt. The gears, the transmission, the top end is brand new. The bore, the, the, uh, the, the crank was rebuilt. The crank, every gasket and seal on this motor and all the bearings are brand new. And the gears were even modified in it. Uh, they were uh, back cut, I think is what he said they had done to them, and heat treated. Um, it's got a brand new Makuni carburetor, new air filter, and look at the exhaust pipe on this thing. This is a true factory style cone pipe, handmade cone pipe, and it works. It just straight up works. Just a fantastic bike. The original tank's in mint shape. It's got new plastics on it. And um, I know I put $25,000 into my last 
r race weapon, my YZ450. And when you start, it's not that hard to do. When you start adding up custom engine work, handmade exhaust pipe, $3,000 fork, modified suspension, rims, all this stuff adds up uh, to a, a big ticket. So unfortunately, when you sell these bikes, when I sold my $25,000 YZ450, I got 11000 for it, which is almost twice what a new one would cost. This bike here, I would suspect, is, is will probably have a street value somewhere in the $7,000 range. I know the fork, the front end alone is worth three grand and could easily be parted out and, and sold. And the bikes without that front end is worth at least four to 5000 So we'll let the market determine the actual value of it. I do have a, a work order around here somewhere. I'll grab in a second. Um, starting at the top here, these are top of the line pro taper bars with new pro grip 801 grips the levers are new all of the cables are brand new it has a um, uh, um, new throttle assembly the triple clamps again are all high performance lightweight simmons uh, uh, triple clamp um, setup it has the work style front number plate a new front fender a gold i think it's a did rim i'm not sure I have to take a closer look. Brand new Hoosier tires. The frame rails are in mint condition. There's no damage to the bottom of the frame rails. The seat foam is new. The seat cover appears to be new. The plastics are uh, new. Um, gold chain. Just a stunning machine and as fast as hell as I just demonstrated. So if you have any questions about this bike, give us a call 860-454-7024. Started up first kick for me the first time I got on it. Again, three and a half hours on a frame off, $10,000, no exp expense build build. Junior, is there anything you'd like to add about this sick 125YZ? Not much love to say. Um, motor's clearly clearly very healthy. Sounds great. Um, no weird noises, no piss and slap, no lower noise. Um, clean chassis. I mean, guys, this era with the gold wheels, the rear wheel, a couple motos through some thick sand, the coating um, tends to wear drastically uh, this is a very clean set indicating low hours and clearly lots of money invested so uh, when, when done up like this with the the factory um i i mean guys simmons simmons forks are not easy to find Check out the frame rails they're in mint condition now now this bike was built the gentleman that even has a polished um, um motor mounts brand new carburetor look at the uh reed block that's a brand new custom reed block and reed pedals uh, the, the engine has been ported Everything from the intake to the carburetor to the reed valves to the piston to the uh, porting to the head to the exhaust is all uh, performance items and uh, it, it absolutely rips. These were fast stock. They're even really faster when they're done up like this. So um, come around this side, check out this side of the, uh, of the frame rail too. And absolutely no damage. This is a pristine low hour bike that he did a no expense spirit um, build on it. Unfortunately, this guy uh, who, who got this, this came from the, the collector who had the H1500 and the H2750s, all the, the Kawasaki triples and Honda SL350s that we bought, Mac. And um, this is a good friend of his who the bike was at his house. He was selling it because he lost his leg in, uh, due to diabetes and health issues. So he was building this. He was in his late 50s, and he wanted to ride the vintage AHMRA. And, you know, it, it, you, you never know when your time is up. Nothing's ever guaranteed. So if you want to have some fun, get a vintage bike. If you ever had a dream to do this, do it now because you don't know what the future may bring. So you should chase your dreams and, and uh, buy this bike and go out and meet us at uh, Mid-Ohio. Ride some vintage races, maybe come the MX Rewind. There's nothing I could think of more fun or better for your soul than, than ripping on a vintage dirt bike. So, and this is the classic one, definitely investment quality. If you have any questions about it, give us a call, 860-454-7024. Thanks for watching, and God bless America.